Hello and welcome to my weekly video blog and today on A Vogel Talks Menopause I'm going to be talking about important minerals you need in the menopause and why they can help. If you like my tips and advice then please subscribe and remember to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of all my new videos. I often mention vitamins and, and mineral supplements in, in the videos that, that I do. I have done one previously on vitamins and I thought today that I would do one on minerals that I tend to recommend and why they may be of benefit for you. So number one, for those of you that have been watching for a while, you'll know it's magnesium. Unfortunately, falling estrogen can hinder the absorption of magnesium. So here we are at a time in our lives when we need lots of magnesium for all sorts of different things and we end up getting less of it. And this can have quite an impact on a lot of our symptoms. So magnesium is needed for mood. It's it's our happy mineral. So if you remember that, magnesium is our happy mineral. It's needed for joint health. It's needed for muscle function, heart health. It can help ease um, sugar cravings. It can help to beat fatigue. So as you can see, there's a huge number of uh, symptoms where magnesium can be of benefit. And it's one of the, the supplements I recommend that women will come back really quickly after starting it to say how much better they feel. The recommended amount in the menopause for women around about the age of 50 is about 375 milligrams daily. I tend to recommend about 400 just to top it up just a little bit. Foods that you can get magnesium in, there's lots, but the main one would be things like nuts and seeds, a little bit of dried fruit, greens, dark green leafy vegetables, and whole grains. <clears throat> Number two is calcium. We need calcium for our bones, and remember, falling estrogen can um, precipitate things like osteoporosis so we need plenty of calcium to try and offset this so calcium is needed for our bones for our teeth and for our joints a good amount if you've got a good diet calcium is in so many different foods so if you have a reasonably good diet you shouldn't need a really high dose and two high of calcium can cause problems so just be careful with this one I usually recommend about 500 milligrams a day. Food sources, your dark green leafy vegetables, nuts, pulses, almonds especially, sardines, if you're not vegetarian or vegan, eating the little bones will give you a nice source of um, calcium. Dairy has calcium, but just watch with dairy because it's quite high in fat. It also has very little magnesium in it. So um, don't rely on dairy foods for your calcium intake. Um, number three, iron. This is a really important one if you are in the perimenopause and your periods are starting to get heavier or longer or closer together low iron can turn to anemia and anemia can cause fatigue, low mood, anxiety, poor sleep and joint aches. So iron is a really important one to have. But again, please don't just jump in and start taking an, an iron supplement in case you don't need it. If you take too much, again, this can cause all sorts of problems. If you're getting heavy periods, then yes, please um, check with your doctor, maybe get your iron levels checked first of all. If you think you may just be a little bit fatigued and can do with a top up, there are lovely um, gentle iron supplements and tonics that you can get at your local health food shop. Iron itself tends to be in red meats, in shellfish, in legumes and pumpkin seeds. If you're a vegetarian or vegan, because obviously you're not eating um, meats, you may be more prone to anemia, even if your periods have stopped. So just be aware of, of this particular um, scenario. Number four is probably one that's not quite so well known, and that is potassium. Potassium is really important to um, 
get rid of fatigue. So you need potassium for energy. You also need potassium for nerve function. So if you're getting things like pins and, and needles, um, then potassium can often help with this one. Potassium is also needed for heart health. Um, it helps to get good nutrients into your cells and potassium helps to expel toxins from the cells. So it's, it's a really important one just for keeping our body going in, in a healthy manner. Foods, you shouldn't need a separate potassium supplement unless um, you have been deemed to be severely de deficient. Potassium is in loads and loads of different foods. So it's in spinach and things like broccoli, sweet potatoes, mushrooms, peas, um, cucumbers. If you do feel a little bit fatigued, you could look at our balance supplement that has a lovely combination of calcium, magnesium, zinc, potassium and vitamin D in it. Next one, number five, is zinc. Zinc is so important for our hormones. It, it's needed for hormone production. It's also really important for our immune systems. And we do know that during the menopause, the immune function can be compromised just because of all the, the physical and, and emotional changes that are going on. Zinc is also really important for the skin, for wound healing, and also to maintain our smell and taste. You're looking at roughly 50 milligrams a day supplement um, and you can top it up through your diet. So you're looking at things like whole grains, red meat, baked beans um, is another one, cashew nuts, <clears throat> excuse me, almonds, um, vegetables, garlic, broccoli, kale and spinach. So it's in a lot of really good healthy foods. The next one is chromium and chromium is so important for balancing our blood sugar level. So if you are getting lots of sugar cravings, if you're getting big energy dips, it may well be to do with, with the fact that your blood sugar balance is a little bit out. You can get supplements um, for chromium. You're looking at roughly 20 um, micromilligrams on, on a daily basis. Um, it's in lots of different foods. So again, if you are aiming for a good healthy diet, you may not actually need a supplement unless you're having these issues with uh, your, your blood sugars. And last, but by no means least, is iodine. Iodine is so important, again, for thyroid function. And again, we know in the menopause that a lot of women end up becoming um, borderline um, hypothyroid and that can um, trigger weight gain, it can cause fatigue, you can get um, poor hair, skin and nails, joint aches as well. So iodine is important for all these different areas. The easiest way to get iodine, you need very, very little. It's roughly about 150 UG per day. But you, the best source of iodine is kelp tablets. Unfortunately, in, in the UK, um, our soil generally tends to be very low in iodine. So you may not necessarily get everything that you need from your food. So a, a kelp supplement um, can be a really good idea to take on, on an ongoing basis. Now, you might be sitting here thinking, have I got to take all these every day? I will be rattling. Um, the answer is no. You can get the majority of these all together in what's called a, a vitamin or a mineral supplement. The ones I would recommend, even if you're not quite 50, a lot of companies do what's called a female over 50 supplement and these tend to be the best because they will have good levels of everything that you need to help you through the menopause and also beyond um, the, the menopause as well so this is a nice one that you can um, look up to calcium and magnesium isn't always very high in these multivates purely because these are quite um, bulky minerals in themselves. So if there's any one that you need specifically, 
then um, you can just top those up with, with separate supplements. Just one thing to be aware, if you're on thyroid medication, then you shouldn't really be taking iodine unless this has been okayed by your practitioner. I hope you found this one helpful. Um, you know, it is best if you can get everything that you need from your food, it's certainly the best way to go. But unfortunately, the menopause, your nutritional needs tend to go sky high and a lot of women do find that just supplementing um, with a, a, a single um, multivit or multimineral can make quite a bit of difference to how they feel generally. If any of you have any other great tips regarding this then please do let us know and until then I'll see you next week for another edition of A Vogel Talks Menopause.